let's go shopping. Uh, good morning. Um, it's Ron Brown with Silvercom Computer and Technology Club. Let's go shopping and you're going to follow me as we travel around. Oops, I've made a mistake. We can't leave our homes. Darn that COVID thing. Well, what to do for this presentation? I guess we could shop online. Let's see what we can talk about today. Well, now, full disclosure, I love Amazon. I've been a customer of Amazon since they sold books. Those of you who know me will tell stories about how the Amazon delivery truck stops at my home in Mesa three times a day. These rumors are, of course, all true, but this is not what we're gonna talk about today. We're not gonna talk about Amazon. In fact, I'm gonna tell you what not to buy on Amazon. So the first uh, thing we're gonna talk about is I wanted to just uh, let everyone know that I um, took a group of our club to the Amazon Fulfillment Center in Phoenix about four years ago. Uh, this might be a fun club outing for you to do. Um, this was the one uh, on Mojave Street in Phoenix. And uh, you had to book this a couple of years in advance. I think they've probably stopped doing it for the uh, COVID because of the COVID, but it is a fun thing to do. And I took a group of, uh, of our club, I think that we were limited to 20 people and we took them to the Amazon Fulfillment Center and to learn a little bit how they process parcels and how they do things. And this is, uh, this is the parking lot. This is the, uh, the main entrance to the Fulfillment Center. And, um, and they were very hospitable and gave us a nice two hour tour. These, I think there's five fulfillment centers in, uh, in the uh, Phoenix Mesa area. Uh, and then of course they are scattered all across the United States, Canada, in fact, the, around the world. Some are highly automated, some are not. This was sort of 50-50. Uh, and of course they will not, that's quite, the, I had to take a picture of the door there. That's how you get in. And of course it is very secure and they don't allow pictures. So I can't show you all the cool things they do in there, but it was very interesting to see how they deliver parcels so quickly. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about the shopping apps that uh, I use. Um, and one of the ones, if you look on the left side, we're going to talk about Costco a little bit later. The one thing I don't talk about a lot in this presentation is Costco, but I shop a lot at Costco, but I don't use any shopping apps or anything to do with Costco, although that has changed recently and I'll, at the end of the presentation, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but what we're going to talk about um, are these shopping apps I use all the time. We're going to talk about Sam's Club. We're going to talk about Kroger, which of course, Fries, which is right next to you guys. Uh, we're going to talk about Walmart. And we're going to talk about even the Chrome browser. Many of you don't know that there's a shopping app built into the Chrome browser. So in all the apps that I use and all the, the things I do with, with um, shopping, uh, probably Sam's Club has the best and the most well-developed app I've ever, I've ever used. Uh, I don't know if you're all members of Sam's Club. I love going... Uh, up to Sam's Club and, and doing shopping there. I hate using the local uh, Costco because it's so darn busy. The one down by our place uh, is just crazy busy and the lineups are intense. So it's nice to go to Sam's Club where I don't have to line up. Uh, this is an app. You download the app onto your phone and you set it up as payment with a credit card. And when you come into the store, you simply uh, scan the, you open the app up. You have to be in the store for the app to work. It won't, you can't use the scan and go feature if you're not in the store. So you connect, and this is another issue between, between Costco. Costco does not have Wi-Fi. It does not have any connection that you can use. Whereas all the, uh, uh, the, the software that we're gonna show you today, the stores all have their internal Wi-Fi. So this connects to the uh, Sands Club Wi-Fi, and then you can use the scan and go. And as you'll see, uh, you just, uh, in this particular situation, um, this lady's scanning the box of peaches, and it just scans and enters it into the app. Now, uh, once you finish uh, scanning all your product, then you simply uh, hit a little, swipe a little button on the phone, 
and that automatically charges it to your prearranged credit card. So when you leave, you'll see this is uh, what happens is you leave, this lady is going uh, out the front door because you don't have to go through the checkout line and the uh, scanner, the checker just simply scans your phone and there's a barcode. If you look up to the right on the screen there, you'll see a, uh, a QR code and the scanner just scans that QR code and they say, fine, have a nice day. So there are no checkout lines uh, at all. And I, and in talking to the, um, the, uh, the Sam's Club people, they said about 75% of people now are using this service. And if you do go to Sam's Club, and I go there quite a lot, uh, you won't see, they might have three or four checkouts open. Um, you don't see very many people there. Most people just use the scan and go and out you go. And there are, it's quite a bit different experience than, than going to Costco. Now, um, I love going grocery shopping with my wife because I go right up by you guys, right on the, uh, uh, right up by the fries, right next to your, um, your resort. And they have a bar in there. They have a wine bar and I can go and have a drink of wine while my wife goes shopping. That's the first thing I like about going shopping there. The second thing is that it's fun because I can use their scan and go system. Now, not all Kroger or, or Fry stores have this, but yours does. And so uh, there's two things that, and it's a lot of fun. So that can make shopping fun. And it also has some advantages and we'll, we'll show you. So when you enter into your Fry store just next to you, you will see these devices uh, on, the, um, on the wall there. Uh, and I want you to look up on by her right hand uh, up here. And I want you to look, uh, I guess over here, I guess I'll show you up here and you'll see bags next to this. And so there, one of the things when you either pick up this device or you use your phone, be sure and grab the scan and go bags. They're clear bags. And when you go around and scan your devices, scan your groceries, you can actually put them in the bags and that eliminates the bagging issue. Um, so when you go into the store, if you don't have a smartphone and you don't have the app on your smartphone, you can pick up one of these devices. Now, the first thing you're gonna look at and look at, they look very complicated. They've got all those buttons and everything on them, but they aren't, they're really easy to use and someone can show you if you're having problems it takes you two seconds to figure it out. But most of you all have smartphones. So just put the, uh, put the uh, Kroger app, the Fry's app onto your phone. And when you come into the store, hit the um, scan and go part of the app there and bingo, you're set to go. Now, uh, as you go around the store, uh, this is what your scan and go app looks like on your phone. You simply will, uh, of course, as you know, you'll scan the barcode and it will enter it on the phone. Now, it's cool part about this is, is uh, as you get better with smartphones, you also can check the price, uh, not through this particular, um, not through, through this particular app, but you can also check the prices on all sorts of other like if you wanted a can of beans and and you're gonna and you're gonna decide okay am i gonna pay for this or not then you can quickly go to um and uh there's lots of other apps that will check the prices of beans for you at all the other stores and find out if you're getting the best deal or not anyway this is uh all you do is you scan it same as uh same as before you you pick up the uh cereal box or whatever you're going to do just hit the scan on there um and the other thing that this does is that it really keeps a close watch on what the prices are because, you know, we go around the grocery store and we put all sorts of stuff in our buggy. And then when we go to that checkout and those scan, you know, the, the checkout people are really fast. All that stuff goes flying into your buggy. And do you ever actually look at the prices of these when you are, uh, when you are, when it's flying down the counter there? So it's much better when, when you pick a box up and you look at it and say, is this, is this really worth $7 or what? And you, and you, cause you have to scan it in, you see exactly what the price is. Now, the second thing is if you look around carefully, uh, you may have looked at this before, but if you're in the produce section, um, they have scales there that you just put your apples on the scales and then, uh, and then just scan that and it scans it in. And you'll see that. And they have the little scan and go on the top there and they're all over the, all over the store. 
Now to check out, you go to the self-checkout. And when you get to the self-checkout, those self-checkout lines, you will see this little icon, you'll see this little uh, um, uh, sticker on the self-checkout. You probably wondered what the heck that was. You look next time when you do a self-checkout, all as you do is scan that is the last item in your uh, checkout and it takes all the stuff off your phone and puts it into the self-checkout machine and then you can uh, and pay for it however you want, however you would normally do it. You, whatever, however you, you've paid for stuff in the past, you would use the same thing. So it transferred, in this case, it's not like, it's not like Sam's Club where you actually pay on your phone. This actually transfers all the uh, data from the app on your phone or from this little portable scanner into the self-checkout machine and then you can check out. The other thing you can do too is if you don't know if you've got a bag of apples and you don't know, you didn't weigh them and scan it, you can use the self, the weigher on the self scanner there as well. And so uh, then you have all your uh, product in your, and it's already bagged because it's in those clear bags and out you go and, and you don't have to go through the checkout. Just a minute here, where is, Uh, and again, there's the, the scanning. And then when you leave, when you leave the, uh, when you leave the store, you just put your, uh, your scanner back uh, onto the machine and off you, off you go. Uh, and I think that's fun. I think it's, it's cool. It's fun. Um, and it, it saves, it saves a bit of time, but I think the issue is, is that I'm more attuned of what things cost as I put them into my, uh, into my grocery cart. Now, um, Walmart, so um, Walmart has an interesting app. They don't, they discontinued the scan and go. So Walmart doesn't, uh, they have a very advanced app that you can use on your phone, but it doesn't, uh, but they don't have a scan and go. So you can't scan something and check out on your phone at, uh, at Walmart. They have a lot of other things that they do, but they don't do that. Uh, but one of the things that's fun to do is you can go around and look at the uh, different um, items and get a different and get a different price on things. And I'm going to show you a little video clip now. And um, this is a, a YouTube uh, fellow who does this as a uh, he has a YouTube channel, and you can follow him, and he'll tell you all where all the specials are. And it's sort of fun. So just watch this because I actually took a group of people to Walmart, and we actually did this for about an hour. We went around and scanned things, and watch what watch watch just watch the video now. Um, uh, maybe it's the next slide. Right. Hey, what's up, everyone? If you want to find amazing deals at Walmart, you're going to want to watch this video all the way till the end. Because let me show you this right here. This video game is only three cents. That's the Walmart hidden clearance price. See, the price tag said it was originally $20. It was clearance marked for $3. But when you scan the tag, it's actually only three cents. So people were walking by this over and over again. And it was a three cent product. And I show people how to do this all the time. And they're always like, yeah, but um, what do I do now? Do I go and show my phone to the employee? How do I buy it? So I took all five video games. I brought them to the register. And this kid rang these up and he was like, um, uh, dude, these are three cents, dude. And I was like, yeah, man, I know they're three cents. It's Walmart hidden clearance. That's how we roll, bro. And basically, it's kind of funny. So these games were originally $100, but at the end, I paid $0.16 cents for five video games. Pretty cool, pretty crazy, but you can do this with any type of product. So you should really subscribe to my channel because I show you deals on all different products all the time. I love doing it, and um, let's just get to it. I'm going to show you how to use the app, and I'm going to change the way you shop at Walmart forever. So you're going to want to get the Walmart app. Nothing fancy, 100% free. Anyone can get it. So once you download the Walmart app, make sure you open it inside the store because you see this address right here? This is the address of the store I'm in right now. This is super important because now the app works as the store assistant, which means that everything I scan in this store is going to show the price of the item for this store specifically. Now you see this little icon over on the right, this little barcode? You're going to want to click this little barcode icon and it's going to open up your scanner. So now your camera on your phone works as a price scanner. 
So you can go to a barcode, you can scan it, and you're gonna see right now, this item right here when it scans, this is three cents in this store specifically. Not the store down the street, but this store. So make sure you open up the app when you get to the store. Now one other thing real quick I wanna touch up on is, everyone that I tell about this strategy, they say, look, I get bad service inside of Walmart, and I'm always like, well, you need to realize Walmart has free Wi-Fi. So you could take an iPod or a tablet and you could download the app and you could use the free Wi-Fi and essentially your entire family could go around scanning for hidden clearance if you wanted to. It does come in handy. Keep that in mind. All right, so this tip is so important. I truly believe that everybody watching this should do what I'm about to say. So basically what I do is I follow different accounts on social media, Instagram, and it's really why you should subscribe to my YouTube channel right now because I post about deals and I'm going to give you an advantage. So basically what happened was I saw someone post about this item being on clearance and now I'm seeing it at my local Walmart, but at my local Walmart it's not marked clearance. So I'm going to give it a scan. It says it's $300 here at my Walmart. Now when I scan it with the scanner, the actual price is $150, so this is on hidden clearance, but I would have never known that if I didn't see somebody post about it. That's why you should be following accounts like mine, and we'll give you a head start. You get a total advantage when you do this. Everybody should be doing it, honestly. So the fun part about that is, is that you can, um, and, and I did, I took a group of people up to Walmart and we, uh, we, we, we went around and scanned things and looked for hidden clearances and it was a lot of fun. So we did it for, for it, was a, it was a computer club outing. So that was sort of fun. Anyway, the other thing that I wanted to look at is if you go, uh, many of you use Chrome as a browser. When you uh, type in um, a, an item to search uh, as a, just a general search in Chrome, what I want you to do is go down and look underneath and you will come along and you'll see images, news, and if you click the shopping app, then, then you'll go into the Chrome shopping app and it will then search all the uh, prices for that particular item that you're looking for locally and give you a comparative price. So in this particular case, I wanted the iPhone SE and uh, I put that in and did shopping and of course it came up with the options. One of them was uh, um, one of them was with Apple, the other one was another company and it gave me the prices. So it will, it will do local searching for you as well and that's just Chrome. All right, purchasing groceries. Um, this is interesting and I don't know if you've uh, looked at this uh, before, but there's a product called Amazon Fresh. Now I, uh, I use this two or three times uh, this last year, uh, it got, I used this before COVID, uh, between, before the uh, epidemic occurred. Um, this all got messed up a bit, I think, with, because it got so overloaded, it didn't work as well, but it worked really well in November when I tried it. And this is called Amazon Fresh. And this is their, one of their grocery services. And this was originally designed to be a product that was going to cost you $119 a year. And this was the original design and you would be able to buy fresh uh, produce and have it delivered to your house within two hours. And this was going to be a service they were offering you for $120. Well, um, what happened was is that they now provide this as a free service within, uh, within Amazon, with, if you have an Amazon Prime account. So uh, if you look here on my account, and this is a picture of my account, my Amazon account, you will see uh, that up here on the left hand corner in the red box, it says fresh. And this is where I can click on this and uh, I, uh, it brings up another menu, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, so if you have a Prime account, this is free for you. Now you must apply for the service. Uh, and part of the reason, there's no charge, as I said, but you have to apply and they only allow so many people per week into the service because they have to have the drivers and, and the back end to be able to do this. So I think they want to control how many, but I applied and got in in two or three days and then I could use the service. And this is a great service for seniors. If you have 
<clears throat> and, and, and of course, the whole reason behind this changed with COVID. But before that, if you had seniors who had a hard time getting out, this was a great service. So what happens? This gives you two hour delivery of groceries. So uh, again, it's a, it comes free with, uh, with Amazon Prime. Now, when you come to the, um, uh, when you go to the, the Amazon Fresh website, these are all products that are, somehow they're sourced locally and they're fresh from local producers. So this is not like it's coming from big warehouses and I'm not quite sure how they, maybe they get it from Whole Foods, I'm not sure, but uh, you'll see these are the, this is what your menu would look like. Now, uh, when you decide to schedule your order, this is what you'll do. You'll see this is a, you can see this is my uh, delivery location here in Mesa, and I can select the day and I can choose the time. And uh, if you're an Amazon Prime member, there is no, there is no charge. So what happens? Well, a truck like this comes to your house and uh, it was right on time. The, the, the fella had a really big truckload of groceries. They were all coming to Silver Ridge Resort, so it's a popular service. Uh, and this is what it looked like when I got it. I got, I ordered a bunch of product and this is, uh, it was delivered in these bags and, uh, and I had three of these and we'll tell you what I ordered. I ordered some things that I wanted to be a little bit picky about. I wanted to, I ordered a pomegranate because uh, I wanted to see, did they give me a nice one? And I wanted to do avocados, you know, buying avocados is really screwy. You don't want to get overripe ones. So I thought, what are they going to give me? It was perfect avocado. And I bought some blueberries. Blueberries are extremely fresh. So I wanted to test that out. And that all worked out really well. It came uh, nicely wrapped in a, in a, in a bag uh, to keep things cool if it needed to be cool. And here you'll see down inside, they put a, uh, a frozen water bottle is how they keep it cool with ice. So they give you a a free water bottle of frozen frozen ice. I ordered some uh, preserves and some of Dave's bread. And so they all, so anyway, that's what I ordered. They came and I looked at the prices and um, comparative shopping. Now, uh, the, the, in the large, if you look on the screen, you'll see in large, uh, these are the uh, fries prices at your store. And let's take the blueberries, one pint of blueberries, uh, was $7.99 at Fry's. I paid $3.49 on Amazon Fresh. Um, Bonnie Newman Preserves were uh, $4.99 at Fry's. I paid $3.63 on Amazon Fresh. So these, so the prices are very competitive. The stuff is great and the produce is really, uh, really good. So this is a great service for seniors who are having trouble getting out. You're worried about COVID. You're worried about going out. This is a great service and it's called Amazon Fresh and it's available in your area. I, talk about, um, I talked about Costco at the very uh, beginning of the, uh, of the show and said I don't use that for online shopping. Well, August the 1st, just a few days ago, in Canada, Costco rolled out same day delivery through a company called Instacart. And I thought, this is cool. But, and so Costco has actually changed their uh, marketing strategy now and is providing, and, and I'm sure they'll be doing that uh, as well um, in the United States, but this was uh, uh, started in Canada now and we, uh, you get same day delivery for Costco through Instacart. Now you probably are aware Instacart is a big international company and you normally would join Instacart and Instacart then would pick stuff up and have it delivered to your, and there, you'd have a deal with Instacart. But what happens in the Amazon, or in the Costco situation, you actually log in, it's free. It's all included in your Costco membership. So this is uh, what it looks like. You log into your Costco uh, uh, membership here, and you'll see this is, I'm logged into my, my membership here. And then you'll see you have two options. You have the, uh, the Instacart option here, which is same day delivery, and you have a two day delivery for non-perishable items. So you have two choices here. And what happens when you, when you wanna order this stuff? Well, so I thought I'd test it out. I wanted to test it out and see what happened. And so I ordered a package of uh, baby spinach uh, and it was $4.79. I ordered some portobello mushrooms, they were $6.59, and some mini peppers for $7.79. And I like the Kirkland carbonated water and I got a big, and they're heavy and I always hate carrying those out to the car. So I ordered one of those as well. 
Now I haven't been back to Costco. I'm gonna go and check the prices on this to see if they there are the same prices at the warehouse. Anyway, I ordered it and it came, the order came to, what is it? I think it was 40 bucks and it was uh, going to be delivered at my door. Uh, now, <laughs> I ordered it and it was supposed to be delivered on Sunday. It didn't come on Monday, it finally came on Tuesday. So they're having a little trouble with this because they're having, there's a lot of people ordering with this. Um, and here's the delivery people delivering it. This is from the Great Doorbell. That's another talk I can listen to. And that's what that's what it looked like when it arrived. Now I think I'm not quite sure how it how this works, but I think Instacart hires these people. I think they actually go and do the shopping and deliver it. So it's not really like they're people in the store doing this, or uh, this is a separate company that Costco is partnered with. But it shows their commitment. This is a permanent thing, and this is available for people who are not Costco members as well. Although I doubt the Instagram is free, Instacart is free with that. So it's probably you have to pay. I'm not sure about that, but that's what the product was in it. They delivered that and that was, um, so that's how it worked. I want to talk a little bit about paying online because um, if we're going to do online shopping, a lot of the barriers to online shopping are particularly with seniors is they're worried about, about pain and, and, uh, if you uh, uh, look at, there has to be some trust. Now, I'm, I'm sure all of you remember, although there won't be, the younger generation won't know what I'm talking about, but in the, all of us will remember COD, cash on demand. You ordered something and they delivered it by post and you paid the postman the money and then the money went back and you were sure you got the item because the postman gave it to you. So uh, the problem with online shopping is there has to be some trust. In other words, you're going to buy something online and you're going to pay for it before you get it. So there, there has to be some trust or some resolution of this and people are, or else people are going to get scammed. One of the things that's so important is that you never, ever, ever, ever use your debit card online. You should not use your debit card for online payment. This is a, there's three types of services that you should never use your debit card for. One is payment online, two is gas purchases, and three is travel expenses. Those are the three things you should never ever use your, uh, your debit card for. Always use a credit card. So please, if you're doing online shopping, don't use your debit card. I want to talk about PayPal now. Uh, and we're going to talk about a number of ways to keep you safe online. And if you do not have a PayPal account, you should have one. And I want you to watch this little video and we'll talk a little bit about PayPal in a minute. Hi, Drew Angel here with an introduction to PayPal. Today, we're just gonna take a quick look at a simple question. What exactly is PayPal and how does it work? The easy answer is it's a way to send and receive payments there's a little bit more than that going on. you got your buyers and your sellers involved or senders and receivers. Let's take a closer look, give you a little bit better knowledge on what exactly there is happening here and see how it might help you out. So first you have the buyer side. When you want to make payments with PayPal, of course the first thing you'll do is create your PayPal account and you'll treat it like a wallet. This is your, your digital wallet or your PayPal wallet. Just like a regular wallet, you can hold cash in there in the form of a PayPal balance. You can have your debit card and credit cards in there from various banks or credit card providers. You can have multiple bank accounts, so checking accounts or savings accounts from a local branch from online banks. You can add all of these into that PayPal wallet, and when you make payments, you can choose whichever funding source you'd like to use. So again, your PayPal balance would be your cash, or bank accounts could also be kind of considered cash, and then you've got your credit and debit cards. 
thing is, when you make payments with PayPal, all those funding sources are protected inside that PayPal wallet. So the seller, all they're gonna get is your name, your email address, and a shipping address if it's required, if they need to send you something. So that sensitive information, like the bank account numbers, credit card numbers, and expiration dates, and security codes, the actual billing address associated with these, with these funding sources, that's all protected behind the PayPal barrier or inside your PayPal wallet. So consider, if you go shopping on 20 different websites, and you put in a credit card number in all, all each of these 20 sites, well, that's 20 different chances that they could be saving your card number in their database. They're not supposed to be doing that, but a lot of them do. And you know, if they get hacked and that data gets stolen, now your credit card numbers or bank account information is included in that hacked data. Obviously, this isn't a good thing. And again, when you pay with PayPal, none of that information is provided to the seller. All they're gonna get is your name, email, and shipping address. So it protects you, you have this buyer protection behind that PayPal barrier. This is one of the biggest advantages of using PayPal. Now, this is uh, an example I bought uh, from Lowe's. I bought something the other day, and I uh, this is what you'll, so I, I use my uh, PayPal account, and it gets charged my credit card, but as far as uh, what Lowe's sees, they see absolutely no, um, no personal information for me. There's no credit card numbers. They will, uh, the shipping address was there, but there's no other personal information there. So PayPal is a way in which, whether you wanna pay with your bank account, whether you wanna pay with credit cards, no matter how you wanna pay for it, none of that information is given to the, uh, to the seller. It, it's all as they know is that PayPal has paid it through that, their service. Uh, it, is, it is free, there is no charge to use PayPal. The, uh, the, seller, the sellers provide the uh, payment as with credit cards. But, uh, so this is, a, this is a service. And just to tell you a little bit about that, PayPal was part of eBay before it was spun off in 2015. Since, uh, since it's uh, public offering, the stock has gone up 220 per, 220%. The company last year added 37.3 million customers, and they have over 305 million customers now using PayPal. So it is, it is the way in which, um, there are other ways, but it is the most secure way of doing an online purchase that, uh, that we have today. And I would strongly encourage you, if you do not have a PayPal account, that you should get a PayPal account. The other one is called Venmo, which is also owned by PayPal. And I wanna say a word of caution for everyone. Um, there are changes occurring. They've occurred last year in Canada with the Banking Act and the terms of service that with your banks. Now you all think that you are secure with your bank and your bank has your back and you think if uh, your password gets compromised or something happens and you transfer some money, that the bank will always provide security and, and pay you back that money. I'm gonna tell you that that's changing and that the terms of service are changing with your financial institutions. So all of you who are doing um, electronic transfers or electronic payments, uh, to other people, and I, I have a rental properties and people pay me rent through electronic transfers, and all this is happening, which is fine, but I'm gonna tell you that if it gets lost, stolen, or, or, or something happens, there's less likely that this is going to, because it's not a very secure transaction way to do business. What I'm telling you is the Venmo app, which is the way for peer-to-peer -peer transferring of information. So if I owe Diana some money and I said, I'm gonna send Diana the money, rather than sending her an electronic transfer uh, through the bank, uh, sending it through the Venmo transfer from peer-to-peer -peer is as is, is secure and safe as you can do it. So I'm gonna also recommend that uh, this, is a, this is an app you should be involved with. Now, the other thing that uh, I often recommend is, and you'll see these in your Fry's uh, 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 grocery store as well, 
these are uh, prepaid uh, credit cards. And this is a very easy way if you are really nervous about doing online shopping. A lot of seniors are. They don't like they don't like any of their personal information out there. They don't understand PayPal and all this sort of stuff. You can simply buy these cards. Uh, there is a cost to the cards. They are, they're not that expensive. Uh, the one on the left hand side is a dollar and a half. And you will, uh, and you all as you do is you take these cards, and when you leave the grocery store before you leave, uh, you say, "I want to put two hundred dollars on the visa, this visa card," and the the the, the checkout person does that, and you pay the two hundred dollars cash, and now you have two hundred dollars on a card that you can use online, but it doesn't have any personal information associated with you. These cards are completely anonymous, and but you can use them exactly as a credit card. Now. Um, the uh, the one catch to these cards are <clears throat> is there's a monthly service fee. So you don't want to put two hundred dollars on these cards and and sort of keep them for two or three years because each month it's going to cost you one or two percent. But it works great for Christmas time and no, you know if you want a couple of months you want to do a lot of online shopping you're really nervous you don't have a credit card you can you can use these cards and you know use them up in a couple of months and they work great. So that's uh, uh, they, that's a, that's a really, really, um, and works well. And, and there's lots of different choices and these are available. The other way that, uh, since, uh, most of, uh, most of the product, a lot of people are going to be doing exclusive shopping on Amazon. Uh, we buy the Amazon gift cards. Now, for those of you who are shopping, because I know this group is right next to where my, my favorite grocery store is, which is, is of course fries is gas and points. Now, this is crazy good because once or twice a month, you get four times the gas points uh, um, for, for, for Amazon gift cards. So for example, if you bought uh, $100 worth of, uh, of, um, uh, of Amazon gift cards, you would get um, 400 fuel points. Well, you just need a thousand fuel points to get a dollar off per gallon. Well, instead of putting stuff on my credit card for Amazon, what I do is I just buy the gift cards and just use that instead of paying for my, through my credit card and I get fuel points. So when I come down to Arizona and I'm there for four or five months, I almost pay nothing for fuel because I'm buying the stuff on Amazon anyway. Why not use this and get the points at Fry's? So that's a great service and I love that. Uh, we have Apple Pay, which is, uh, I don't have a lot of experience with that. Uh, and of course, we now have Facebook Pay. So there are a lot of other options for you. So what not to buy on Amazon? Well, let me tell you three examples of things that I would not recommend that you buy on Amazon. Uh, now, this is an article that was in a, um, was online. It was on the news service. And it talks about uh, the massive discount on the Microsoft service laptop. Uh, and it talks about this, uh, and you, you know, I don't expect you to read the article. However, it says here, click here to buy this laptop at a discounted price. And when you click that, indeed, you will come to uh, the Amazon website and you'll see a rather sophisticated computer. Now, whether you need this or not, you may or may not think this is a good idea uh, and you'll see that the price is, is uh, what do they say, 32% off. But I want you to look over here on the right-hand side, and I want you to look at the bottom right here where you see the red line. And you'll say it ships from and sold by this particular company. You have to be very careful on Amazon when you're ordering, and you want to know who you are purchasing it from. Because if you're purchasing it from Amazon, not a problem. It's a pretty good return policy, but in this case, you're not purchasing it from Amazon. You are actually purchasing it through this company. Well, let's have a look at this company and see what they are. So in, in, when you click on CDRY Industries, you come up here and you click on the returns and refunds policy, and you're gonna get this page comes up here. And they give you what their positive rate of feedback is for purchases. Now under 20%, sorry, um, this is, they only have an 80, over 30 days, they have an 82% satisfaction rate. That means one in five people are not happy. And if you actually go through the, and look at the list here, you'll see that there are a lot of unhappy people 
who are who have purchased because they got the wrong model, they got a used machine, they didn't get what they wanted. So this is exactly a case where you would not want to do this. Buying electronics is very risky uh, on, uh, on, on Amazon. Now I would much rather see if you're going to buy an electronic device, uh, buy it from Best Buy, buy it from direct from uh, either the Lenovo factory, uh, Dell or Asus, uh, or even Walmart has a pretty good uh, pretty good situation. I wanted just to talk to you about Best Buy. Uh, I really uh, love Best Buy. I buy a lot of product from Best Buy. Uh, and this is the, uh, however, it used to be a bad company. About five years ago, uh, Corey Berry, who is currently the CEO and changed the whole system around, um, is a big success story. Because about four or five years ago, uh, Best Buy was going down the tubes. They had really nasty commission salesmen. They had really shady business policies, and it was it was quite 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 bad. However, she changed the store around now, and she has now 125,000 employees, nearly 43 billion in annual revenue, and she has the highest uh, satisfaction of employees of uh, in retail when they rate these. And so they're, they're not commission salesmen anymore. They're, 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 they're there to help you. They don't make any money on sales. And they have a two week ironclad return policy. I, and they have price matching. I find them to be, so I really like Best Buy for buying electronics. Um, and, and this is Walmart as well. And don't forget Walmart has a very good online uh, service. So it, interesting if you, this is, uh, this is if you wanted to buy a Chromebook, and we talked a little bit about this before the show, it, and this is all the Chromebooks at the Walmart, at your store, just up the street from where you live. These are all the Chromebooks that are there. But if you go online, and if you look and you search uh, Walmart when you're online and you search Chromebooks, you'll get 979 results. That's, uh, you know, so there's a lot of Chromebooks online. So don't forget about online shopping with Walmart. Now, the second uh, issue would be um, you do uh, with buying electronics on, uh, on um, um, Amazon the, is, is here. Uh, suppose you come to one of my courses I give on routers and you, you go off on your own and you say, gee whiz, uh, I'm going to type in and you type in router and maybe you heard me talk about Netgear and you type in Netgear router. And I did this just recently and you come up with this, uh, this, this router here. And this is, says Netgear Wireless Router N300, okay? And you look at it and it's got four stars and it's only $32.98. And you say, gee whiz, this is a great, great deal. And you order this and you, um, and you, and it comes and it will come in a nice new box and someone has a warehouse of this these these old routers but but if you look up on the right here you'll see that this is a review that was done on this router in 2012 this is almost a 10 year old router now um you know and you would not know this if you didn't know a lot about routers and you maybe didn't know really what you were buying uh no one in their right mind would ever sell you in a brand new box a 10 year old router but you can do that on Amazon because it's, it's just there and someone has a lot of these old routers and they'll sell you one. So unless you really know what you're doing, you have to be very careful with that. The other is, is buying Chromebooks on, uh, on, uh, um, on, on Amazon. And uh, there are, um, and I'm sure, I don't know if I've given my new Chromebook 2020, Chromebooks for 2020 talk to your club, but Anyway, um, there are uh, a lot of really nice Chromebooks now, but what happens is there's 20 million Chromebooks uh, or, or more in the school system in, in the United States. And when the leases come up on these, they, uh, they put them back, the companies refurbish them and put them back on, uh, on Amazon. So there are a ton of refurbished Chromebooks uh, on Amazon. And this is an example. And if you don't know what you're looking for, this is not a good thing to buy. This is a very old Chromebook. It's, if you look here, it says it's renewed. Yes, it is only $149. But 
but you can get a brand new current model for $169. So this is not a very good deal. And again, you have to be careful uh, with what you're purchasing in electronics. Price checking. There are two, uh, there are two um, programs I use all the time for price checking. Uh, they are both extensions. One is called Camel, Camel, Camel. So if you uh, go to camelcamelcamel.com, you can do that or you can download the app. Uh, and the other one is called Keepa, K-E-E-P-A. Both these uh, are price checkers and they're both uh, apps that you can use. Uh, and they both do pretty much the same thing. Uh, what you must understand is the prices on Amazon change by the hour. So as demand goes up and goes down, so do the prices. And uh, these, both these apps uh, keep track of what the prices are and you can even say I will buy it at this price let me know when it comes back and if you look at this graph here you'll see this is uh, one by camel 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 this is uh, Intel i7 processor and you can see this they'll give you the historical prices uh, on Amazon by either third-party sellers or uh, or by Amazon pricing and you can track and see exactly what the prices of the uh, of the, uh, the devices you're buying on Amazon. And all Amazon products are, uh, are, are them. It's very interesting, I have to tell you just one little story here. There was a, um, uh, a uh, I forget the name of the game, but about three years ago, someone wanted to me to order this game. And I forget, it was a card game, a board game of some sort. So I ordered on, um, I ordered this uh, three copies on Amazon. They wanted me to, three, three people wanted me to order this. So I ordered three of them on Amazon. It was 19.95. Fine. So then I got five more people came and said, gee whiz, I want you to order it again. Cause we really, we all want to play this board game. So I reordered it again and it was 24.95. And then two more people at the end came and said, could you order this for me? And I said, sure. And it was $31 all within one week. But as the demand goes up, so does the price. So this, this is a very good way of keeping both Keepa and Camel 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 are, are perfect. The difference, they do exactly the same thing. The nice thing I like about Keepa is it, when you install the app, it comes up and it's always there. You don't actually have to click on it to start it, but they both do the same thing. Uh, and it saves you uh, a bundle of, oh, and I was going to show you on this one. Sorry, I was just, what I wanted to. Um, so you can set uh, on, on both of them, you can say, okay, um, I'm going to buy it. You can say what, to, they'll tell you what the, your, your desired price is, the current price, and what the, the change in price is. Now, the, the one that uh, some of you have asked about is called Honey. Honey is an app that's owned by PayPal. Uh, and some people really like this app. Uh, what it does, it keeps track of all your purchases and will look at any, um, uh, it looks for any uh, coupons or any deals that occur after you've purchased it. And it sort of keeps track of all your online purchases and then it applies on your behalf to get money back. And people actually make a bunch of money each month using this, this, this software. I think it's creepy. I really don't like it. I did. I tried it for a little while, but it it installs all over your computer. It wants to keep track. It wants to search your email. It wants to search everything you do because it's trying to, of course, make you some money. But in doing that, it has. It's this creepy thing that goes all over everything, and I just didn't like it. Some people use it. Um, Leo Laporte, the radio host that you probably have heard of, he has his tech show. His wife uses this all the time. She makes a lot of money on it. I just think it's creepy and I don't like it. So, but if you want to try it, it's, it's okay. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is Amazon returns and tell you a little bit about some of the things that I've learned about returning because of course, since I buy a whole bunch of stuff on, uh, online, um, a lot, sometimes it gets returned. In fact, 30% of what Amazon is purchased on Amazon actually gets returned. And there's a lot of criticism uh, uh, from Amazon regarding that because of the cost of delivering all this stuff and transferring it back. And what happens to all the returns? 
Uh, and you don't want to be standing in a lineup like this as you, uh, you will be around Christmas or right after Christmas when everybody is trying to do returns. Well, in fact, uh, the returns are handled mostly the same way. Uh, they all go to massive warehouses and are palletized. And you will see, uh, see these big pallets here on the right-hand side, and these are all Amazon returns. These are sold to third parties and they're resold back uh, sometimes on Amazon, eBay, or whatever. And you can actually go and you can watch YouTube videos on people doing their unboxing or their, they, have, they have YouTube shows in which they go and they buy the pallets for three or 400 bucks and then they, they, they show you what they've got and then they try to resell it and the money they make. And there's quite a good business that you can do with this. So the, uh, the products that you purchase do not go back to the supplier. They go back to the uh, a third person, a uh, third party. And again, there's massive, massive warehouses because there's a huge number of this coming back. Amazon changed this um, in the past. They used to, um, used to uh, uh, well, small items you could return with US Postal Service, which was great. Uh, sometimes you had to take it back to the UPS store. Uh, that was problematic in our area because all the UPS stores uh, seemed to have huge lineups and were super busy and I hate standing in line to return something. So they've changed now and uh, particularly for you guys, it's really close to Kohl's. And you, uh, you'll take, uh, so now uh, the returns are uh, uh, back to Kohl's and you just take them into Kohl's, which is of course right next to your Walmart, which is really close to you guys. And you can, uh, you can take them back to Kohl's. Um, now in the return process, when you hit the return, now to return something, you just basically go and you, uh, in the algorithm you use to return it, um, I always put, item defective or doesn't work. One of the things that when you click on that, even if it's a book, I still click on this because it makes the process real simple. You never get any more questions. It just, boom, you get an instant, instant return. In fact, as soon as you take it to Kohl's and as soon as they scan it, the return is actually crediting back into your account. This is one of the, uh, the videos that uh, this is, uh, I'm not sure if I'm playing the video. No, I didn't put the video in on that, but he was a fellow who, who has a YouTube channel and he, uh, he gets boxes of Amazon returns and he does, uh, he shows everybody what he got and then he resells it. And there's lots of those on there. Uh, the last thing I want to just mention is many of you get frustrated and you don't know how to phone Amazon. In fact, if you want to talk to Amazon, it is super easy. They have great customer service and it is real easy to get them to call you, but you have to know how to do it. So how to phone Amazon. Oops, sorry, darn it, just a minute. Uh, it should be a video here, just a minute. Just wanna go back. forward. I think this will play. All right, so now you go down to the bottom of the screen uh, and you click on, you click on uh, the, you click on help. See the help? Click on at the bottom of the screen here. It says help. You click on that and that will take you to another screen. And what you want to do in this screen is we want to come down again and we want to come down here to, to need more help. You want to come down, you don't want to, I want to, I want to get them to phone us. And when you click need more help, it says contact us. When you click contact us, I don't want to chat. So I don't want to do the chatting. You can click, we can call you now. So you click it there. And when you come down here, it says make a selection and you really doesn't matter what you click in here. What you really want to get to is this menu here. And when you click the phone button, and I'm not going to click that because as soon as you do that, the phone is instantaneous. When you click the phone button, you just put your phone in and it immediately will phone you. Your phone will ring immediately and there will be somebody there. 
and they have the power to re do returns, to do all sorts of stuff. I've never had any problems. I've never waited. I've never waited online. Amazon truly is, um, is very customer orientated. And so that is how, um, that's how you can talk to somebody if you're having trouble with the return. All right, that's it. Uh, what time is it? That's an, hour, an hour's presentation. Uh, I will, uh, I'm gonna unshare my screen and I'll, uh, I'm certainly uh, ready to answer any questions that you have.